Romans 5, we're, we're, I'm going to just take one little verse out of each uh, chapter just to kind of walk us through what got us to chapter 5. Romans 1.18 kind of kind of hits, hits, uh, hits it running, right? Uh, it hits the road running for God's uh, wrath is revealed from heaven against all godlessness and unrighteousness of people who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. So right away, Paul, I mean, just just... Man, hitting wrath and hitting unrighteousness and ungodliness, that, that, that's, that describes us. Chapter 2, he says, because of your hardened and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself for the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment is revealed. Another encouraging theme there that the God's wrath is coming against us. And then who's he coming against? Well, Romans 3.23 says, all of us, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And in Romans 4, uh, Paul goes into a rather lengthy discussion of, of faith and how Abraham was justified uh, by faith, how God gave Abraham a promise and an assignment to accomplish, and Abraham believed that God would do what he said he would do, um, uh, which was a pretty far out thing. And, and Abraham's like, okay, I'm in. Uh, I believe you. I think you can do this. And uh, we're told that that faith was credited to him as righteousness, and then Paul the apostle uh, applies that to, to our faith as well, to our spiritual lives in chapter 4, verse 23. It says, now it was credited to him was not written for Abraham alone, but for also for us. It will be credited to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. We get to chapter 5, which we were last week. We began where Paul, again, writes that we've been justified by faith, and he says that we have this great peace that comes through, through knowing God, and we kind of broke that down last week, the peace that we have through God. And then he gets to verse 6, which is where we'll start this week, where he says, for while we were still helpless, still helpless, uh, some versions say powerless, while we were still helpless or powerless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly, which is who? us, everybody, the world. He, cried, he died for the world. Everyone who's, who, who's ungodly while we were still guilty of sin. He didn't wait for us all to, to, to like come around and, and, and start acting better and being better people, anything like that. While we were still guilty of sin, while we were still lost in rebellion, while we were still acting like fools as he described earlier in the letter, while we're still marked for God's wrath, we were still powerless to do anything to get us out of the spiritual condition that we were in. At just the right time, when we needed God the most, when we were desperate for the peace that he offers us, we were completely lost in our ways. At that time, Christ died for the ungodly, me, you, the world. He died for us. All have sinned, fall short of the glory of God, and he died for all of us. And he goes on in verse 7, for rarely will someone die for a just person. Though for a good person, perhaps someone might even dare die. But God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That while we were living in sin, before anyone thought of us as, as just or, or good, whatever that is, uh, that type of person, uh, he died for us. He went to the cross for us. Now, now, sometimes people, we get a little uh, uh, skewed in this whole goodness thing. Like, you know, it's like people will ask, well, why do bad things happen to good people? That just seems unfair. It seems unright. And, and really the proper answer is it's kind of hard to say it at the time is, well, are you that good, though, really? <laughs> I mean, honestly, is anyone all that good? Some tragedy happens. Why does God let bad things happen to good people? Well, none of us are that good. I mean, in, in honesty, uh, it, it, it was just not... And he says, well, someone might possibly die, dare die, you know, if, like, they have a good reputation. They seem to be more good than bad. If you look at their life and, like, well, they don't, you know, swear at me every time they look at me, that maybe they say maybe they're a little better than bad, you know, maybe they're kind of good. Even a good person, someone might, might possibly dare die. Probably not, though. I mean, honestly, would, would you, I mean, it's, it's hard, hard to take, take, take Jesus out of the whole equation. Would, would you just die for someone who, who, who you know, um, there are people who are, uh, people who sign up for, you know, uh, the police force, you know, like they're, they're going to risk their life. People, who, a military, you know, they, 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 they said, I will die for my country. I will die for the people. There's many people who will. Um, 
But it seems like today, if you're just walking down the street, you're walking down Hay Road, and uh, a group of people uh, suddenly pop up and start beating, they start beating me, you know. Uh, I, I have no faith that the people around me will, like, stop and help, you know. What I, what I would expect them to do is probably, they might stop, but they'll just pull their phone out and say, this is going to be great, <laughs> you know, and, and they just watch me get beaten. That, that seems to be where we're at today more than, than anything. Maybe you saw the, the viral video this past week of the woman uh, interacting with a wild bull on the Mex- Mexican beach. How many of you saw that? You know what I'm talking about? Some of you did. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I uh, I'm not going to show the video, but, but, but I took a couple screenshots. Uh, this, was, this was a woman, evidently, she was, she, you know, was kind of hanging out at the beach. and it's, it's, I didn't know you had, there was a thing, wild bulls in, in Mexico, I guess. I don't know. And, and this bull comes up, and, and uh, it kind of starts eating her stuff. Evidently, some people say she was maybe feeding it a little bit. And, and, and people are yelling at her, go away, just please, please, just leave the bull alone. Get out of there. And, and she's like trying to collect her things and the, you know, interacting with the bull. Finally, the bull says, whatever, you know, and starts tossing her. And, and, and um, like, like the guy circled, he's like yelling. You can hear him on the video, please stop it, stop it, you know, quit it. And, 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 and she's not listening. And, and then you have this brave soul came up and hid under an umbrella. <laughs> and I'm going... I don't think that's going to help. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, but, you know, to their defense, their defense, I'm like, it was a short video. It all happens just like under two minutes, right? And, and it's like, they're probably thinking to themselves, what do I do against a bull? Uh, you know, what, how, if I jump in there and distract the bull, so, okay, now I'm dead. But for this lady, I don't know. And, and maybe, you know, we were asked, we begged her not to do what she's doing, but she did it anyway. You know, um, all these things are probably going through their mind. They're assessing the whole situation and how much am I willing to risk for this person? I don't even know. And, and, and finally, if you hit the next, next picture, someone came up with a bucket of water. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know if that's going to really take care of the bull either. But at least like, she did something. You know, like, She didn't know what to do either. She kind of came around the car and was like, ah, it splashes, splashes water. Most of it didn't, didn't even in, hit, hit the bull. But at least, like, I mean, there's a risk involved with that. But most of the people, the brave soul on the beach there was the one who just sat there with the camera filming the whole thing. I'm like, <laughs> at a distance. <laughs> I'm like, uh, come on, do something. Scream, clap, hell, I don't know, do something. Rather than just sit there and video. So, so I, think, I think Paul's kind of accurate. Uh, I'm, I mean, maybe someone would die for it. Chances are, though, that a stranger jumping to your rescue in your time of need and voluntarily sacrificing their life so you can live is it's really pretty small. I mean, who dies for a stranger, right? Even, even if they are just a just or a, a good person. Well, Paul tells us what God does. God does. God proves his love for us. And that while we were still sinners. So we weren't all that good while we were still sinners. We certainly weren't just. Christ died for us. He saw our need. He knew God's wrath was coming toward us. It had our name written all over it upon sinful man and women, right? He knew judgment was on the way. He knew that if we died in our sin, we would wake up in the hands of an angry God. So he jumped to our defense. That's the love of God that we enjoy. And, and it's part of our story. I mean, it's, it's just what, it's, it's an amazing love that we have from, from God. When people ask, what kind of God would send people to hell? Maybe you've heard that. I've, I've heard it before. Uh, maybe you can answer them. Well, the kind of God who lets you go to hell if you want, I guess. He doesn't send anyone there. He allows you to go if you choose not to accept. He did everything. He did everything that needed to be done. He went to the cross, he paid the price, he took the wrath, he, everything, he did it all. All you need to do is, is say, yeah, I'm in, you know. So he, he doesn't send anyone there. He loves you too much to just send you there, but he lets you go there if you want. He lets you go there. God saw our desperate need for forgiveness while we were still sinners, while we were still playing games, while we were still messing with that wild bull on the beach. And everybody's yelling, don't do it. Like, I'm good. I'm smarter than you. I got this. While we were still doing that, he came, died, taking the wrath of what was meant for us. He goes on in verse 9. Um, how much more then, since we have now been justified by his blood, 
will we be saved through him from wrath. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, then how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? And not only that, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received this reconciliation. We, we boast not because how much uh, goodness we have, so how much of a just person we are. We, we boast in God because of Jesus Christ. I, I love what Paul writes in Ephes, Ephesians, uh, Ephesians to the church at Ephesus. Because um, Romans is really, um, it's this academic writing feel to it. And, and Ephesians, same author, he has more of a heart feel to, to it. I mean, there's some academic stuff in there too, but, 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 but Romans hits, hits it harder. So in Ephesians, he's writing to the church and he's basically saying, I really pray you understand fully the academic part that's being described that we've read the last few weeks in the first five chapters of Romans. He doesn't say it that way, but, but it's, it's the same guy, same author, same theology and everything. And he said, I hope you get this, church. Right? He's, he's, this is why, uh, Ephesians 1, 15, this is why, since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus, your love for all the saints, I never stop giving thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the wealth of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the mighty works of his strength. Paul's praying all this stuff we've been breaking down in Romans. I, I just pray you get that. I pray you get it fully in your heart. I mean, you fully understand the depth and the width and the, 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 everything, everything about the love of God that it really touches your soul, not just your head. Not, 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 not just academically, but, but you get it, that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened, that we know, I mean, know the, comp, the, the hope of our, of our calling, the wealth of his glorious inheritance, the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe. What power? What kind of power? Well, the power that conquers sin, the power that overcomes the grave, the power of eternal life with the Father through Jesus Christ, the power that saves us from selfish pride and rebellious nature that we all have and transforms us from sinner to saint. That power. I hope you grasp that. And I mean, I mean fully like get it and embrace it. He wants us to understand that, that, that love of God in a deeper way because the deeper we understand God's love, the more meaningful our, our spiritual lives are in all areas of our life, but our, the more the life comes into our spiritual walk. So I was just kind of thinking about this, and, and this isn't really from the, the Romans text, but just, just the application of what is Paul saying of the things he unfolds for us in Romans, and then he prays to the church in Ephesus, and, 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 and is a, obviously God's desire for us as well. How beneficial is it for us to understand deeper the love of God? So I just have three things here that, 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 that I thought of through the week. The deeper we understand the, the depth of love that God has for us through Jesus, then there, there's some deeper things that happen, of, you know, that there's a consequence is, is from it. The, the, and then the deeper, more meaningful our worship experience becomes, you know. It's, it, it's, it moves us from worship being like a check off list. Yep, I went to church today, or, or um, oh, I like this song, or that's not that song, or whatever, uh, to, to a, a truly uh, a, a moment that we have with God. Now, now, that is to be beyond a Sunday morning like worship experience, but, but during the worship, you have a deeper experience when you more fully understand the love of God for us. Have you ever been uh, singing a song in a worship service and, and suddenly the, the words just, you know, they just connect at a higher level than, than before? Like I've sung that song a hundred times and all of a sudden it just hits you like, whoa, whoa. Maybe it's a moment you're in, maybe it's something you're going through, maybe it's just a, uh, uh, an, uh, an enlightening that has happened to you in your relationship with, with God, but suddenly you find yourself overcome with, with, with emotion and, 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 and uh, with appreciation for what Jesus did on the cross. It just hits you like, man, 
I, I really am a wretch. I really am a worm. What an amazing grace. Whoa, whoa. You know, it's not just something I've sung all my whole life. But, but a moment hits you. Maybe your eyes fill up with tears or you, or you just feel overwhelmed in the presence of God. I mean, it just it hits you differently. Or, or this, you have this deep appreciation for what it's saying. Uh, there's been times I've had to just kind of just sit down in silence and, and just, just listen uh, to, to, to the rest of the song. Where I just like I just I can't I can't sing another word because it's just moved me so deeply. It doesn't happen every week, every song, or anything like that. But the same thing like that. But but it, but it, it happens. Or maybe you just quietly utter out Hallelujah. You know what what a what a what a concept we just sang. What a moment we just had as a church family together as we're we're talking about this this love of God. And and, and what else can you say? I, I was driving home from a, a board meeting in Kentucky, uh, not last week, week before. Drove out there and spent a day and then drove, drove back. Um, so it's, it's, it's about a 12-hour drive or something like that. It's way down in Grayson, Kentucky for Hippo Valley Christian Mission. And, and um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of tired, you know, and I'm, I'm just kind of like... You know, you are, you've been driving, and you're just like, oh, man, and trying to stay awake and trying to stay alert and, and trying to remember what... Did I, did I, happened the last five minutes I'm not sure you know and I was kind of there and I'm listening to stuff but it's all the stuff I hear all the time and it was just bored and, and for whatever reason uh, I, I, I thought of this book that I, that I had listened to on tape like 30 years ago or so maybe even more and uh, it's called This Present Darkness. Anybody ever read that before? Like an 80s book? Yeah, I mean, it's just a powerful book on spiritual warfare and things going on. It's like this little college town and a small church and, and, and demons. And it's a spiritual world. Every once in a while you get a glance of what's going on. Like there's an angel up there and a demon and, and working with people. And, and, and as the people pray, you know, there's more backup and everything uh, for the angelic beings. And it's just kind of a cool, cool book. It, it sure motivates you to pray, by the way. But all of a sudden, I thought, okay, I'm going to listen. I'm just going to listen to that. Surely it's out, out there somewhere. Like YouTube has everything, right? So I do a little work, uh, search on, on YouTube. It's, I have 16 hours of that book available. Um, so I went uh, from uh, Grayson, and I went home, and I went back. No, I didn't do that. But uh, um, I, all of a sudden, I was awake and alert the whole time, though. I mean, so it was perfect for, for driving. But the thing is, I, I'm going along, and it's like, it's, it's, it's a good story and everything, but there were moments I just like, I just got emotional driving down the road because it took me to a different place of like, man, the, how far God goes to show his love to us, you know, like little things that are going on behind the scenes. I mean, it's, it's not scriptural. I mean, it's not unscriptural. But it's not really scriptural. It's just, it's just a fun little, little fiction book. Um, but but the, the, the depths that, that God went to to like get this guy in this place and that person there and this over here and he's playing chess, you know, and, and uh, the, it just it would hit me once in a while like, man, God loves us. You know, wow, it was just a cool little little uh, moment. The better you understand, I see, I'm sure that hit me deeper this time than it did 35 years ago. And it's like, oh, this is a cool book, you know. This, was just, it, this brought me to a depth of like, man, I really appreciate how much God loves us. The deeper you understand, the deeper you get that, the deeper your worship uh, will, will, will go. Maybe you've been in a worship setting, setting before where, where there's uh, distractions. And, and we all get distractions. We're, we're people, right? Uh, as uh, but, but the deeper you go in your understanding of Jesus, like the less distractions matter. You know, okay, this person's talking over there, and there's maybe a baby crying here, and, and uh, oh, the fan's blowing on me too much, or it's not enough, or it's a little too cold, or a little too hot, or the song's too loud, or too soft, and, or, you know, we, there's all kinds of reasons that we can just kind of get lost, you know, and forget what we're here for. Uh, but the deeper appreciation and understanding you, that you have for God, you don't care. Everything kind of disappears from that, you know. It just doesn't matter where you're at, or what you're singing, or what the setting is, or what the temperature is. You, you you're just there enjoying the presence of God and the presence of God's people, and, and you're just, just engaged. And it, it's a thing that comes with maturity and a deepness of understanding. So it's just, it's just an overflow of understanding his love. A second thing, the deeper we understand the depth of love of, uh, that God has for us through Jesus, the more meaningful and purposeful our service to God becomes. It's not like a volunteer opportunity. Um, I, I kind of hate that. To, it's kind of the modern thing. Everybody, we need volunteers. We're having a volunteer day. And I'm like, ah. 
We have volunteers at the chamber. You know, we have volunteers at other things, in, in chamber of commerce. Um, uh, Kiwanis, we ask for volunteers. I don't really like volunteer. We're not volunteering for activities at church. We are engaged in kingdom work at church. A whole different ballgame. The, the, the more you understand that, the, the deeper your service goes. And I'm not saying the number of hours, but just that you're appreciative. Like you do things, you're like you're doing it for Jesus. You know, that something you wouldn't do normally or something, something that, that maybe you don't even like, but you do it because like, I just love Jesus so much. And this is like, this serves, this serves his kingdom. It's not about me. It's not about the people around me. It's about the kingdom of God. It's about, it's about him. There's a whole new level when, when you uh, serve the king than if you're like serving a church. You know? oh, I, 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 I just hate the, the, the like, like when you serve, when you do things, ministries, lead, serve, volunteer, uh, whatever it is, you're not doing it for Pathway Church. I mean, sure, things, but there are things we have to do just to function as a family and everything. But please don't look at it as, well, I'm, I'm just helping the church out. It's not the church. It's for Jesus, the kingdom. It's, it's, it's him that we're serving. It's him that we're helping. It's his kingdom that when we're building. When you teach children, you're not just volunteering. You're doing God's work to build the kingdom for the future. When you clean the building, you're not just volunteering. You're engaging in service to the king so that people can come in a, in a comfortable setting and, and engage in, in teaching and all the things that happen here. When you, when you feed the homeless or participate in the senior supper, you're not just uh, you know, giving up your time to a worthwhile cause and, and isn't it cool to do things like that. You're doing exactly what Jesus said to do in Matthew. You're feeding him. You're serving him. You're clothing him. You're serving him in great ways. When you're doing that to serve Jesus, it just elevates everything to a, a whole new level. It's not like, well, the church, church sure is asking a lot out of me. It's no, no, just, just that's what Jesus calls of us. We're his servants, we're his slaves. He calls us into kingdom work, and we do it to serve him, not, not a particular congregation. The last one, the third one, it's the deeper we understand the depth of love that God has for us through Jesus, the more profound our relationships in the church become. Relationships are so huge, they're so big. I'm involved in a lot of things just out there, right? I'm in the Kiwanis Club, the Chamber of Commerce involved with that. I go to high school every, every uh, week for mentoring. Uh, I talk to a, uh, a lot of people and do a lot of, um, when I'm involved with the, the Green Days Parade once a year, and I'm the director of that for the whole community. So I'm talking to a lot of people, a lot of engagement going on with that. I know a lot of people from a lot of different worlds. I'll, I'll stop, you know, go to the store, and someone will go, hey, Dan, blah, blah, blah. And then the first thing I got to do is think, okay, what, categorize, what, what category are you in? Like, where do I know you from? Church, school, chamber, you know, Kiwanis, all the different things. And once I figure that, I can kind of narrow down, like, oh, it's you. And I get real generic, hey, you, you know. Um, <laughs> and and uh, because I, just, I probably know too many people. Um, but, but, but the thing is, there's nothing like the relationships that are formed, brother, sister, sister, brother, you know, in, in the family of God. There's something here that you can't get anywhere else. The relationships are more meaningful here. I, lo I love the guys, that, the gals, whatever, the people at Kiwanis are wonderful people, but you guys are like soul brothers, soul sisters. A whole, it's a different level than, than, than that. Um, it, it, it's it's the, the thought, I mean, I could give up literally anything I do out there. I could dump Kiwanis next week, I could stop doing the parade, I could stop doing whatever, and I'd be fine. I'd, I'd be like, oh, I kinda miss that, you know, and we'd do some good stuff. Uh, but I would be horrified at the thought of not having these relationships. These, these are the ones that matter. These are the ones that are going to the, to, to, to the heart of who I am as a human being. I, I, live, I live for Sundays. I mean, not just this time, but I mean, I, I just going up and down the hall, and even if it's just a hey or hi or a hey, a shake, a point, uh, just, just knowing we're like here, we're connected together. I don't know how many times it happens every week. Uh, I'll be in here and I'm doing something like, oh man, I gotta run to my office and get something, whatever it is. And, and by the time I get to my office, I've had like five conversations about other things. Then I get there, now maybe I'm just getting old, but I've done this forever though. And I'm like, I have no idea why I came to my office. Uh, it happened today, it happened today, I was like, I was something, I guess I think I was talking to Richard, and he was like, oh yeah, it reminded me I was gonna get some homeless sign-up sheets for the next two times, and, <coughs> excuse me, and I start walking, and I have this conversation and that conversation, and fist, fist bump someone, and blah, 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 and I get down there, and I'm like, I don't know why I'm here. Um, I think it was Fuller, because I had said something to them, and he was like, oh yeah, you're doing homeless, or, or, or it was Alan, who was it? You, one, of, one of you said something, I'm like, oh, that's exactly it. Um, it but I love, I love just being, hanging out 
here. Right? Right? I, can't, I don't say that about anything else that I do, that I just, just love people so much um, that, I, that I love doing that. But it's something about the church, something about our brothers and sisters in Christ that, that makes it uh, wonderful. So I, lo- I love Sundays. I love, I love our Saturdays uh, when, the, when the guys hang out and have breakfast. And sometimes we have deep conversations. Sometimes we don't. We're going through our books. And, and, but it's just we're just having real life. Like, like we're just talking about, about, our, our, about you know, how to be better husbands, how to be better uh, fathers, how to be better men, how to be better stuff. Like, how can I improve my life? And, 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 and we talk, and, it, and it's just so meaningful and deep. And it's, just, it's, it's because we love each other. It's the iron sharpens our iron thing. It's like, dude, step up. You know, do your thing. And, and we get to have that kind of relationship. Um, the homeless ministry then happens, you know, a couple hours later. And, 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 and just, I love doing that. It's, it's invigorating the service part of that. They're thinking we're doing Matthew 25 stuff, but even more so is the fact that I'm doing it side by side with brothers and sisters in Christ. Like we're kingdom people serving the kingdom together. It's not just me out there on the island being my own whatever. Um, it's just we're together doing this and, and, and we're doing Jesus stuff. It's just the, uh, so uh, it, it, it's uh, invigorating, you know, energizing Although yesterday it was really hot, and then we came home, everybody took naps. But um, uh, when I woke up, I was energized. <laughs> when I was able to re- recover from that uh, a little bit. But it's just because of the relationships, relationships uh, that, that we have. Uh, I, I met with the youth group uh, this last Wednesday. Uh, Scott, was in, Scott was going to D.C. doing, doing work. And, and uh, we've been kind of talking that, that once a month he's been... Uh, has other commitments and can't do youth groups. And so, well, maybe, maybe I'll jump in next fall and, and, and help once a month. So, oh, okay, but it doesn't, doesn't hurt to, like, do they hate me? I mean, I'm like, it's not, it's not like get, get the young guy to come to youth group, right? It's, it's the, oh, it's the old guy who can't walk anymore. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, but we had, we had a good time and we had a good conversation. I thought, I just, I just loved hanging out well, with them. And we made a new video, uh, if, if you made it for the uh, announcement thing. I made a couple of them, actually. I haven't uh, worked on Abel's new one yet. But um, it's just the relationships, hanging out, hanging out with, with, with people. I, um, it, I can just go on forever. I, 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 would, I can't imagine not having that in my life. It would be such a more empty life without those relationships. Next, next to Jesus, nothing feeds my soul like being with, with you guys and gals. I mean, you know, nothing. Because my neighbors, see, they, they're, they're great people. They're nice. But they don't understand the first five chapters of Romans like you do. They don't understand where we've all come from and what we've gone through and, and what Jesus has done for us and, and the, the desire and passion we have to keep growing in Christ. They don't share that with me. Uh, I, I love the people in Kiwanis, but they don't have the passion for God you all have. Matter of fact, uh, we have, uh, I've been doing Kiwanis since I was uh, just graduated college, right? So it, it was just like get involved in the community and, and do Kiwanis. Uh, we just, for the first time ever, in, in a club I've been a part of, stopped praying. Um, and it wasn't because people hate prayer. It was just that um, often I'm home late Monday nights and it's early Tuesday morning. So sometimes I'm 10 minutes later. So I'm, well, they pray like right off the bat. And, and, and they've always had someone there who's like a praying person. Well, one guy's health has, has had problems and, and uh, so they'll have me step in. And then if I'm not there, they'll look at each other like, oh, I don't want to pray. I don't know. Like they don't know how to pray or don't like, you know, it's, it's, they don't have that relationship with God enough to say, yeah, I'll pray. I'm not talking to you anyway, you know, and, and, and pray. And it's just weird now to go to the meeting where like we just, I don't know, it, it's, they're, they're good people, but, but they don't share the relationship we have, the relationship with Jesus that, that bonds us, us, us together. The more grace uh, that we have received from God, the more grace we have to offer our brothers, the more important our relationships are, the more grace we have for our sisters in Christ, and the easier it is for us to love one another deeply, as uh, the Apostle Peter said in 1 Peter 1. Since Basically, he's saying the same thing since Romans 1 through 5. He doesn't say it that way. Y'all need to love each other deeply. I mean, I mean not surfacey. Not like morning, but I mean like have a heart for one another. Since you have purified yourselves by your obedience to truth so that 
you show sincere brotherly love for one another from a pure heart, love one another constantly. The NIV has the word deeply. That's how I have it memorized in my head. Uh, so I always think of that word deeply when I read constantly here. Uh, from a pure heart, love one another constantly because you've been born again, because Jesus has changed your life, because he's come and justified you and redeemed you and made you pure and made you holy, because you're his, you love one another deeply because Romans chapters 1 through 5 you love each other deeply I just don't have that kind of relationship at the grocery store or the neighbors or my friends that I hang out with on Friday night I don't have a life I don't hang out with anybody on Friday night but you know what I'm saying (laughs) it comes to being born again through the blood of Jesus Christ and what's this love of God Well, while we were still helpless, while we were still sinners at just the right time, Christ died for ungodly people like me and ungodly people like you. He made the first move. God did. We didn't deserve it. He took the first step toward our forgiveness. He knew we needed it. He said, you know what? I'm going to do everything that needs to happen for you to get forgiveness, for you to have grace in your life. Even before we asked him, even before we understood we needed it, he did it. And now he waits our response. Most of us have already said, I'm in. That's why we have that bond. That's why we love one another deeply. Even, even the warts and alls. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, we're all people. We do we have stuff, right? But we love each other anyway because, it's because of Jesus, because of Jesus. That's why. And he waits uh, for us to accept his offer of forgiveness and, and to grant that same kind of forgiveness to the people around us because that's what we do as people of Jesus. That's just why it works.